<clears throat> All right, guys. Um, let's just let's get started. Uh, let me just present this. Uh, hang on, just just a quick one. Sound check, I guess. Okay, can you guys hear me? Um, how do I even check? All right, awesome. Thanks, man. Right, so let me share screen. Awesome. Right, so hi guys, thanks for taking the time. Today we've got you know a typical scenario here where we have a single page application and a resource server here or an API endpoint. And we do have a pool of users here that has to authenticate before they can gain access to this single page application. And you notice that within this pool of users as well, we have an admin and a user. And so basically only an admin can access the resource that's you know, behind this API endpoint here. So how can we secure uh, your API endpoints? Or to kind of you know, put it in a phrase it differently, how can we implement authorization controls so that only your admin user has access to this API endpoint? So hi everyone, my name is John and I am a solutions engineer at OffZero. And today we'll take a look at how we can secure your API endpoints using OffZero. So from an agenda point of view, all right, we'll do a quick overview of what OffZero is. I'll give you a two minute you know, kind of developer take on what OffZero does. And then we'll jump, jump in into the live coding session um, where we'll be building out a single page application and then implementing authentication and authorization for it. And then after that, we we'll jump. Uh, if we have time, time permitting, of course, we'll have a short Q and A session. But in the event we actually run out of time, uh, then please feel free to hit me up on any of the social media channels or pop by over the Office Zero booth after this uh, workshop, and you know we'll be happy to chat with you then. All right. So let's really jump right in. In uh, okay, so hang on. So let me. Oh, right. So. So what is OffZero? So OffZero is a service for developers or application builders to authenticate and authorize users into their application. Right. And authentication and authorization has been around for a very long time, but it is an ever-changing and evolving landscape. New security threats emerge, new best practices, authentication protocols, standards evolve over time, and as well as new ways to authenticate are uh, you know, constantly being developed. For example, the recent sign-in with Apple ID or the up-and-coming web of N. So when I speak to developers that have to build and maintain an in-house identity solution, they often tell me that they deal with it with a lot of frustration and pain because not only is there a steep learning curve on all these different authentication protocols, right? They have to implement a bug free version of it and then maintain it as well. And when you know a product roadmap changes, new feature requests come, then their existing identity systems usually are not catered for that change. And so rinse and repeat that whole cycle again. And what's worrying for most of them really is the security aspect of the identity platform that they built because they usually aren't security experts and companies seldom afford them the luxury of the time to just solely focus on identity and security. So what Offshore has done is it's built a service, right, that has taken all our years of experience, security expertise, and, and know-how, and packaged it into a service so that developers can simply use it and not have to worry about authentication and authorization. Right? And instead, use all that time and energy to focus on solving their business problems instead. All right, and so here we have a slide here that you know, kind of highlights all the different features and capabilities that the Offzero um, platform brings. But for this demonstration here today during this workshop, we'll just be using a small subset of them. So that's my two minute pick of what Offzero is. Right, so let's jump into the live coding session. What I'm going to do actually first, just pull this in, just into my um, window here, just so they can see if anyone's typing anything on the, uh, in the chat. 
All right, so in this live coding session during this workshop, what we will do is we will be creating an Office 0 tenant, and then we will then create and configure an application to use Office 0 for authentication. We will then modify that application to call our endpoint, our API endpoint, and then implement role-based access control for authorization. And kind of at the end, kind of see it all in action. Right, so with that, the first thing we need to do is to pop over to auth0.com here and sign up for an auth0. Click, click sign up here. Right. right. And simply just enter your username and a password or sign up with any of Okay, so once you've signed up for an account, Off0 will direct you to create. And what you see here is part of our public cloud offering, which allows you to create an Off0 tenant either in Australia or Europe or in the US region in a multi tenanted public cloud environment. So let's actually go ahead and create a tenant here today. So I'm going to call it API Days. I'm just going to enter the date 2009. And since it's API Australia, let's actually go actually go ahead with the Australian region. Go we'll click create. So that takes a little bit of time. My laptop's heating up actually. <clears throat> Okay, All right, and so once you create an Auth0 tenant, right, Auth0 will direct you to what you see here uh, is the Auth0 management dashboard. It is a graphical user interface that allows you to manage your <coughs> tenant configuration. Right, and so the first thing we need to do is, as you can see here, at getting started, is to integrate our application with Auth0. Now, we haven't created an application yet, but that's all right, let's just go ahead and actually click create application. And we're not really creating an, an application here. What we're really saying is we're gonna model or represent the, our application within the Auth0 platform. And Auth0 is gonna ask us a couple of questions here, just so that it can generate for us the appropriate quick starts, SDKs, uh, as well as tenant configuration. So let's enter a name here. I'm just gonna call it my app here. And you can see Auth0 provides a wide, or supports a wide range of application types from your native apps, single page web apps, regular web applications, and your machine to machine applications, which also includes our APIs. So for today's workshop, we're gonna create a simple single page web app. So let's select that and click create. <clears throat> so out of the box, Auth0 supports over 65 quick starts and ready to use SDKs that you can simply pick it up, drop into your app, and you're up and running, right? And for today, we are gonna build a single page web app that is using just plain vanilla JavaScript. So I'm actually gonna select that SDK there. Then Office is gonna give us a couple of options, right? And the first is, and this is usually uh, the typical use case from customers, they have an existing application. Office Zero provides step-by-step -step instructions on how you can and how you can integrate Auth0 into your application. And we provide what we call here as live documentation, which are snippets of code that comes preceded with your tenant settings, as for example, here, right? That you, you can simply then copy, paste it into your app, and you're up and running, right? And Auth0 is built by developers for developers. We focus a lot on the developer experience side of things. And it's just little things like these that we do that developers really appreciate us for, right? So, but in our case today, we do not have 
yet um, an existing application. So what we're going to do is to make use of this other option provided by Offstro. And that is Offstro will actually build and pre-see an entire sample application, right, for you to use as a base for your new application or as a playground to explore Offstro's features. So let's go ahead and actually download the sample application. Right. And off zero, hang on, let me click download just to download that application there. Right. So an off zero gives us a couple of instructions here just to set up our off zero tenant. Right. And that's to set the allowed callback URLs the allowed web origins and the allowed logout URLs to localhost 3000. So let me copy that and actually set up my application within my Offshore tenant. So I'm in applications, I'm going to click settings here and I am going to then paste that URL, the callback URL there, the logout URL, as well as the web allowed web origins. And just a little pro tip here, Offzero treats local host you know, slightly differently and that's really just for security reasons. So we are going to actually alias the, the local host name to my website, right? And because we're no longer running on local host, then Offzero, the Offzero SDK that we're using actually requires us to run off a secure context right uh, because it's using the web crypto apis so we've got to also make up for a https so i'm actually going to update that a lot callback url and copy paste that into the logout url as well as a lot web origins and i am then going to save these changes Right, so I have downloaded the sample application. Let's actually pop over to my terminal here and actually extract that. So let me move, um, let me actually copy over it for downloads. Uh, downloads there. Oops. Yeah. Right, and unzip that sample application. Right, it's really. Just clean it up a little bit, remove the zip file, right? And we're left with the folder that contains our sample application. And I'm just going to rename that folder um, to my app, just for clarity. All right. All right. And so the next the set of instructions after that, the sample application is to run npm install, loading all the npm in npm modules, and run npm start. I actually forgot to start my timer. Okay. Let me just you know, correct that a little bit. Okay, that's forward. Right, so now, hang on. Uh, sorry, so let's go and see the, um, I didn't go into our folder, remove package. Let's go and see the, into the my app directory and run again npm install and npm start. All right, and you can see that it's running off port um, 3000 now. So if we head back to our browser, right, and we load, load the local application, right, you can see that I'm actually running off local host still, and it's not over HTTPS. So let's actually, you know, um, jump into the code and actually fix that. So let me at this point just stop this and open up the application within my IDE. Right. right, so to run it off, 
over HTTPS, there are a couple of things we just when you update. Basically, two files. One is this triple W file, which I'm just going to remove the unwanted lines. And what we're really needing is just this server JS file, which is the server that launches our simple page application. And I do have some boilerplate code here, which I am just going to copy over and replace the code here. And we can take a look um, at what those changes are, just like looking at the local history. Right, so I'm just going to expand this a little bit so you guys can see. So essentially what is happening is when what I've done is I record, required the HTTPS uh, module as well as the file server module. And essentially it's reading off my SSL certificates and then serving that in the uh, when I'm creating the server and launching the application, right? So that is done there. And really quickly, just to show you my my um, etc host file as well, right? You can see that I've aliased you know my local host to this my website. So that's all good. Let's actually now run um, again. Sorry. Oh, but it's an error here, and that's because I haven't actually generated my SSL certificate. So let me actually do do that now. Right, and then now that should work. Right, so now you can see it's serving off my website for three thousand. So if we head back over to the browser here, I am going to load. My application, you can see now that I'm actually serving it off HTTPS. Right. So before we proceed further, right, we have the sample application here. Let's spend just a little bit of time understanding the sample application that we have just downloaded. So if you pop back over to my IDE, right, there are only really three files here that are of interest for to us. Right, the first is the index.html file, which for all purposes, you can consider it as the entry point of our single page app or the single page app itself. Right, it contains all the HTML tags, layouts, etc. But what is of particular interest to us is the at the bottom of this file. The first is that with this line, you can see that of you know that we are pulling in the of spa SDK. And the current latest version is actually 1.9. So I am actually just going to update that to 1.9. And so this gives us the ability to use the latest features of the platform as well as the SDK. Right. And two other files that are of particular interest here uh, is the, well, ah, the UIJS and FJS. Let's a quick look at what these files do. So we open up UI.js, right? As I mentioned, we are building a plain vanilla JavaScript single page app. So the UI.js here is essentially uh, painting or managing our views. And so we're not using any, <clears throat> any uh, platforms or frameworks here. So we have to actually write our own router. And essentially, this is just looking at the URL path. And depending on the path that we're on, we'll render the, uh, the appropriate view. And app.js contains really the core logic of this single page app, it handles the logic, uh, various logic, and also handles the logic around authentication. So for example, you can see it handles login, handles logout, right? And what is you know, interesting here is this part here that initializes the Auth0 uh, SDK, right? The Auth0 client. And you can see here it's initializing it, it you know, our do tenant domain ID, client ID. What I'm going to do is I am just going to add a, another parameter here called cache location. All right, and I'm going to set it that to local storage. All right, and what this does is it gives us the ability to debug and use our local storage in the browser so that we can see what's kind of going on behind the scenes and see what information that Auth0 actually passes to our application. Right, so with all those changes, um, with all those changes here, let's actually, let me just restart. Sorry. 
restart my application and, right, and refresh this page. Right, so now I'm actually going to log in. Right, and now when someone is logging in, right, it is redirecting to Op0 for authentication. Right, and because this is the first time I'm signing up um, into this app, right, so let's actually sign up for a new account. Let's actually click sign up. And there you go, I'm actually signed into the application. And if I click and look at my profile, you can see some of the information here being written by of zero. Right, so it's a good point. No, okay. So if I pop back just to you know my slides here, we have so far created an of zero tenant, right? And we have actually created and configured an application here to use of zero for authentication. Oops. Right. But before we proceed further, it's probably a good time just to pause here and actually kind of peel back behind the curtain, peel back the curtains, right, and see what is happening uh, behind the scenes. So I have a little diagram here that's going to be quite useful in explaining what's going on behind the scenes here. So up to this point in time, we have created a single page application, right? And we have integrated it with Auth0 SDK, and which allows us to perform authentication, which will actually handle the authentication. So when a user comes to our app now and he tries to sign in, right, the user or the app is redirected to Auth0 where it's handling that authentication request, right? And if the, those credentials are valid, then what Auth0 will do is that it will pass back to the application an ID token, right? And these are, this, so under the covers, Auth0 uses Open ID Connect. And so part of the protocol is that when you authenticate successfully, Auth0 will return you an ID token. And within this ID token contains the identity of the user, thereby proving who the user say he is. So let's actually take a look at the uh, our single page app here and open up the dev console here. Right, remember we set that cache location to local storage. So that gives us the ability to actually inspect the ID token that is returned by of zero. So if I click and expand this, you can see it here that I have an ID token, right? We can actually go copy that and go over to jwt.io, right? And decode and take a look at what is contained in this ID token. So you can see, oops, right. Let me just clear this one, right. So what you will see here is that in this decoded JWT, as right, part of the OIBC protocols, is returning me a set of <clears throat> standard claims here, right? Which includes my my name, my email, who this ID token is meant for, with the audience parameter, etc. Right, so up to this point in time, right, like I said, we've created an Auth0 tenant, created our application, and now it is using Auth0 for authentication. So the next step we want to do is to modify this application to call our API endpoint. So let's step back into my IDE here and make those changes. Right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to add a button in our page here so that we can you know trigger it to call an api so i am going to search for uh, here. let me find that button copy and paste all right so, so i'm going to copy and paste this button here Take away that, take away the ID. And on click, I am going to call, you know, uh, say call get secret. So the API assume, assume, let's assume that it returns a secret. All right, so I'm going to name that function. And let's actually just um, make the icon a little bit better using font awesome there. 
right? And update that label there. Get secret. Right, so with that change, um, let's actually stop this and rerun our application. So if we actually refresh this page now, right, we do get an additional button here that enables us to call our API endpoint, right? And if I actually, oops, if I actually click this button here, we're going to get an error because we haven't, you know, wired it up to the get secret function. Right, so let's go ahead and fix that. So let's pop over to app.js now, right, and add that get secret function here. Right, so I'm going to pause here, get secret. Right, and this is going to be uh, a synchronous function. So let's do that. Um, oops. Sorry. Uh, uh, async uh, synchronous function here. Let's actually do that. And what we want to do is to make a call to the API endpoint. It should be then you can get a response uh, uh, from a fetch call here. All right. So wait. Fetch. I'm right, going to call enter the URL of our endpoint just a little bit, but let's set up the parameters first. So the first thing is, I'm just update this method. Right, method to get. Uh, and then go get in the haters here. Oops. Uh, for content type, I'm going to set it to application JSON. Yeah. Okay, JSON uh, with the character set is up character set equals uh, UTF data. Right, and because this is an uh, the API returns an application, uh, it returns a JSON file. JSON response, then let's actually also parse that JSON response there. Wait, um, response dot JSON. And then let's kind of just console log that out so we can debug it. Console.log. So response is secret. All right, so if we head back to my terminal, let's kill that and let's do npm start, rerun the application. All right, so if I look at the console here, I am now going to refresh this. And then, you know, call our API endpoint. All right, yeah. And I actually forgot to enter my uh, API endpoint URL. So I've got that here. Oops. All right. And paste it there. Um, oops. Got it wrong. Um, just, sorry, just copying that. Okay. And pasting that here. So I each and I have ex an existing API endpoint that I created as a lambda function that sits behind a API gateway. We'll kind of cover a little bit on that and just a little bit. But for now, we do have this API endpoint, and our application here is going to make a request against it. So let me rerun this one more time. Pop back over to the browser here. Refresh. And let's try assessing our API. And 
it doesn't work, right? The response says here that it is unauthorized. So what happened? So it is a good segue here at this point in time to really quickly go over what is authorization, right? We tried to assess the API, but we were not um, authorized to do so. So, right, so what is authorization and access control, right? Authorization or in access control essentially refers to the process of defining and limiting which users are allowed access to which resources, right? So, and there are many authorization models that's out there. And one of the most commonly used one is role-based access control, right? Or RBAC for short. And role-based access control refers to kind of the idea of assigning permissions to users based on their role within an organization, which kind of maps really well to our use case here where we have users with different roles, like an admin role, and only an admin is allowed to assess the API endpoint. So let's take a look and see how we can set up role-based access control uh, using Auth0. Right, so coming to this slide here, we have modified the application to call an API. And so let me actually just cross that out. All right. So let's head back over to the dashboard and start implementing authorization. Okay. So let's head into the APIs menu here and click Create an API. And we're not really creating an API here to say, Again, we're just modeling or representing the API, our API endpoint within of zero. So I'm gonna call my API, say just my secret API, and gonna add a unique identifier here, calling um, my secret API, right? And click create. Right, and for all purposes of this demonstration, we can assume that my API endpoint, there is an express application that actually, you know, is using some JWT libraries out there uh, as middleware that will inspect the access token going, um, that's calling the API endpoint. It will check the access token, inspect it and validate it. And if it is valid, and then return the resource behind the endpoint. Right. We haven't talked about access tokens, but we'll just cover it in a little bit. Right, so we've created this or uh, modeled this API uh, within Op0. Let's actually go into settings and enable role-based access control. Right, so by flicking this enable R back here, right, we have start, we have enabled it to apply uh, role-based access control policies. Right, so enable that, I'm going to click save. Right, and the next thing we need to do is just kind of define the permissions that this uh, API has, right, or scopes according to OYDC specs. So let's create a permission here called read secret. And really the description here is, well, the ability to read a secret. Let's create that permission here for this API and add that to it. Right. So because we have enabled role-based access control, what's really neat about it is that we can then group these permissions under roles and then assign these to users. So I'm gonna head over to users and roles, click roles. I'm gonna click create a role here and call it say admin, All right? And well, it's an admin. So I created the role, let's um, assign permissions to this role. And over here, I'm gonna add the permission uh, of the My Secret API, selecting that read secret scope here and add that permission to that role. Okay. And now that I have this role with this set of permissions against this API, right? let's assign this role to a user. So let's assign it to the user that I signed in with here, and let's assign him with the role of admin. 
Right, so now my user has this role with the permissions to actually call my API endpoint. So let's head back here, let's log out. Right, and let's log in again. So go log in here. Right, let's try and access that API endpoint now. Well, it still fails. So, you know, what's happening here? So we have, you know, in the Op0 dashboard created uh, a role with the permissions to call the API and have assigned that role to the user. But trying to access the API still fails. And the reason is uh, because if we head back to this handy diagram here, as part of OIDC protocol, when, when you're trying to access an API, it requires an access token. And currently in our application, we have not yet requested for an access token. So just kind of recap, from a user perspective, we have, you know, or the, or the application perspective, we have integrated it with the Op0 SDKs. Op0 is handling the authentication request. Part of that, our OIDC protocol, it returns an ID token. Now, when the user or the application wants to make a request to the API endpoint, it needs to be authorized. And to do that, we need to request an access token uh, from Op0, right? And so when we request or ask, you know, authorize um, uh, to get access to the API, if we are authorized to do so, right, sorry, got to, just gonna change my my earpods to run our battery. Can you guys still hear me? Thanks, man. Yeah, so where was so? <clears throat> All right, so, as, so we need to actually um, authorize against the Op0 tenant, right? Our authorization server here and get back an access token. If the user is authorized to call this API endpoint, Op0 will return it an access token, which then the app application will pass along in the request to the um, API endpoint here. And it's really the API endpoint here to validate that access token, check that it's valid, check that it has the permissions allowed before it returns the resource back to the user here. Right, so let's actually just jump back in into our IDE. Right, and, and you know, ask, uh, well, make an authorization request to of zero for an access token. Right. So access token, um, and we're gonna use the of zero SDK here to get token silently. Right. We're gonna pass in the audience parameter, which essentially just says which API we want this to get access for. In this case, that would be the identifier that we created earlier, which is um, my secret API, right? And we need to request the permissions that we want, in this case, the scope. And so we can say the secret. All right, awesome. So now let's actually rerun our application. And open that up and refresh this. Okay. So if we actually now make a request to the API endpoint, right, 
oops, you see that it is still unauthorized. But if we look at the local storage, we can see that right, right now we also, oops, so let me open it up a little bit. Right. As part of it, you can see that we are return now an access token. Let's pop over to jwt.io there and inspect it. So you can see that in this access token, right, I have been returned a set of claims. One of it is the scope to read secret and also the permissions to read secret. So our API here should inspect this token and validate that these permissions are there and that it is a valid on JWT. So and the reason it's failing is because although we have that access token, we haven't actually passed along in the call to the API endpoint. So let's fix that. So back here. So go add it in within the <coughs> authorization. Um, right. <coughs> Pass into authorization header. Oops. Authorization uh, and error token. Right. Oops. And let's actually just try that syntax. Uh, and access token. Right. So let's pop back over, restart our app. Pop back over to our browser here. Right, and refresh. And it should clear the console there. And now if I click get secret, oh, it is uh there's an error there. So let me just oops, what's wrong there? Oh, um, hang on. so let me try that one more time. Let me just do a check my code here. So authorization, there are access token. Uh, we've got the access token there. So what could have gone wrong? Let me just double check. Let me just, you know, just log out one more time. Be a white column, isn't it? Okay, point. Okay, let me log in. Let's uh, take a look at the example there. Let me all get straight one more time. And let's see, C for ET. Oh, it is actually still. Um, not getting the. Um, Yeah, not, not getting the response that I expect. Just following the point of secret, that's correct. Um, this also, sorry, right? So what happens here is application typo there, application, application JSON, that's that. Uh, let's see if that was indeed that problem there. Let me reset that one more time. Clear that, clear the console. All right. Um, 
is no joints. I fix this here. Uh, secret day. Okay, now, well, what I'm going to do here is uh, minus is going to. Did I actually call the. Oh, that is great, big secret because I got the excess token back. Get. Or maybe just let me, let me try copy paste this block of code here. And then, okay. Well, this is the last, the last 10 lines, but essentially, you know, that's how it, I should be able to get the access to code. Yep, and so I guess there was some syntax error in my code there, but as you can see, right, I am getting the response that contains the secret. Phew, all right, so, well, yeah, just wondering what went wrong, wrong there. I can actually see your changed. Get token silently. Ah. Um, well, I, you know, I, I, I forgot to actually wait for the response here. So that was the problem. All right. Phew, of course, like that. I got that figured out. All right. So, so that, you know, kind of, uh, just, in, well, that does bring us to the end of this, um, um, um workshop. You know, hopefully you provided value and that is how you can use um, and that's how you can secure your API endpoints by implementing authentication and authorization with Auth0. We do have probably around five minutes uh, for any questions. Um, would any questions? Seems like um, so we're all good. So, well, please, you know, if you do have any question, guys, please feel free to ping me on any of the social media channels here, right? Or please just uh, <laughs> and just feel free to actually um, check out our booth. I'm happy to talk to you there. And thanks, thanks, Ben. Yeah, this is my daughter's room. <laughs> so. Uh, it does look really less intimidating, doesn't it? Yeah. All right, guys. So I am now going to then leave this um, session. Thanks for taking the time. And once again, hopefully that was of value to you guys. So please reach out with any questions. See you guys. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.